prayer with God when my son died. And the pastor responded, uh, some would say it's simplistic, God was in the same place then as God was when his own son died. This, this whole idea of God being present in our suffering, and of course within the Christian tradition believing in fact that uh, the whole life and then death of Jesus Christ uh, recognizes the presence of God in the midst of trouble. Uh, I, I, I use the words of, of Frederick Douglass when he suggests that if, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. And I say to people that in the midst of, of the anger, and of course there was a wonderful book titled Good Grief that simply talks about the stages of grief. There will be anger, there will be questioning, uh, and there will be despondency. But then of course going through those processes, one in fact comes out of the other end. Uh, one must do the kinds of things that are important. Uh, reading, quiet, listening to music, et cetera, et cetera, have all been helpful, I think, as I've talked to people, as I've experienced grief in my own life. And is it possible to learn a lesson in, in a time like this? And we're always searching for answers, but is there something that we can take away? Well, I, I, I think there is, but I think, uh, again, we heard from the rabbi, there's this whole sense of community, uh, in the amazing way that we are people responding. There are some words that a person wrote Paul in 9 11 that I think are applicable for what happened in the world. I mean, I share those uh, if, if we have time. Is that all right? But for a person who wrote these words, simply talking about after the destruction of Clint Howard, this is what she said. As the city during the ash rained down, we became one color. As we carried each other down the stairs of the burning building, we became one class. As we lit candles and waiting in hope, we became one generation. As the firefighters and police officers fought their way to the inferno, we became one gender. As we fell to our knees in prayer for strength, we became one faith. As we whispered or shouted words of encouragement, we spoke one language. As we gave our blood and lives a mile long, we became one body. As we mourned the great loss, we became one family. As we cried tears of grief and loss, we became one soul. As we retell with cries of sacrifice to the heroes, we became one people. We are one color, one class, one generation, one gender, one faith, one language, one body, one family, one soul, one people. We are the power of one. We are united. We are America. These words are written by a woman's name is Cheryl Sawyer, who is a professor at the University of Houston. It just seems to me those words came to mind as, as I responded to, uh, of course, uh, what happened in Aurora, as I, of course, uh, was sensitive to simply the aftermath of Columbine. And I guess this whole idea that, that we are family. Yes. yes. Reverend, th thank you. Those words were, were very moving, and we appreciate you sharing uh, your time and that with us this morning. Thank you very much. And that with us this morning. Thank you.